Well, first, let's take you through some stories that are making headlines around the world of business. The executive board of the International Monetary Fund has approved to lower the IMF's borrowing cost for members by 36%, which is $1.2 billion uh, annually. The financial institution in a statement by its press center said this was the outcome of the fund's board review of charges and the sort charge policy. It said following the outcome of the meeting, the managing director of the IMF, Ms. Kristalina Jajiva, said in a globally challenging environment and at a time uh, of high interest rates, membership has reached a consensus on a comprehensive package. But the package, according to her, substantially reduces the cost of borrowing while safeguarding the IMF's financial capacity to support countries in need. She also stated that the approved package will take effect on the 1st of November. Well, let's bring you something about the latest quarterly report from the National Pension Commission employers, and it reveals that public and private sectors have remitted about 692 billion naira to the retirement savings accounts of their employees in the first half of the year. The report also shows that pension contributions from the first quarter stood at 314 billion naira and rose to 377 billion naira in the three months ending June 2024, while well, bringing the total for the first half to 692 billion naira. In the period under review, the public sector had the highest contribution of 380 billion naira compared to 311 billion naira of the private sector. Well, a year on year comparison shows that the pension contribution in the first half of the year 2024 dipped by. 7.24%, if that's from a 746 billion naira last year. At the end of June, the total pension contribution since inception had risen to 10 trillion naira compared to 9.37 trillion naira at the end of the same period in the year 2023. Well, let's take you to the nation's capital where the Nigerian Economic Summit Group is holding a landmark event and they've convinced to address regional and global leaders. They have, we have regional global leaders from government, business, civil society organizations, and of course, the social sector discussing the way forward on global economic issues. And they're also talking about the need for collaborative action to tackle some of these pressing challenges in the world economy. Well, let's uh, bring in TBC Business Editor to Lokwa Gujabi. He is standing by at the venue of the 30th Nigerian Economic Summit in Abuja. Tell Lokwe, you have all of the guests, all of the juicy uh, scoops for us. Please talk to us. What is happening at the Economic Summit as of now? I must thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for standing in as usual. Well appreciated. Well, at the moment, we're expecting the Vice President to step into this hall and that's the Nigerian Economic Summit 30th anniversary. It's a special one and the theme is collaborative action for growth, competitiveness and stability. All of these words mean a lot. Collaboration, competitiveness, stability in any economy for growth. So a lot of conversation will be here for three days, starting today 14th and will be here all through 16th, talking about economic issues, monetary policy issues, how foreign countries can, uh, how Nigeria can attract foreign investment, all of the policies and of course reforms of government at the moment, the impact and what government can do for Nigerians to be able to address some of these challenges. Those are the issues that will be discussed here and I can tell you that the who and who in the world of business is here in this hall. We have almost all the CEOs of the multinational companies present. We have international bodies here. We have um, foreign representatives everyone represented here aside from this hall we have smaller halls where there are series of meetings going on and policy issues are being discussed there and one good thing about this gathering is that decisions are being taken we have government representatives and we have private sector players everyone has a position and pen is put to paper for us to write i'm not doing this alone now i have already with me seated the director general chief executive officer of the chartered institute of that Nigeria. You know the CIOD, they control the directors uh, around the country, Mr. Dele Alimi. Thank you so much for joining thank us you very on this part. Yes, and I think we should start with this team. It's very important, like I was telling my colleague, collaborative action for growth, competitiveness, and stability. How does it come to you? Well, it comes to me that we are just trying to, again, deepen the conversation around the need for 
the public and private sector to come together mm. to work on Nigeria. Mm. Not just the economy, yeah. but developmental matters as it concerns the nation in general. And we we'll come to realize that this is not a one-man show. Mm. It's something that everybody, all hands must be on deck. So the private sector, the public sector, even the informal sector, everybody must come together to get this country on the way. So mm. that's what that theme tells me. And I think it's just, it's apt, it's timely, and it's something we need to continue to talk about if we need to get uh, the headway in this nation. Mm, indeed. And when you look at the sub teams focusing on inclusive so development, it takes me back to the challenges That's through COVID-19, what countries went through, and you see growth a bit reduced, even IMF coming to say we're going to review some of these figures. What do you make of those global issues too that affect countries like Nigeria? Yes, I mean, of course, uh, we, we, are not, we, we are part of a global world. Yes. And every time the world is shrinking and becoming smaller and smaller. It's no longer a situation where something happens in Nigeria and the man in the U.S. says it's not my business. Mm. It, has, it has effect across the world. Look at what is happening to the world because of what is happening in Russia. Yes. Between Russia and Ukraine. Look at what is happening in the, in the, in, uh, between Israel and, um, and, uh, and, us. and how it's affecting the world. Yes. So, Crude oil prices exactly. and all. Exactly. So it is no longer a situation where somebody sits down in his own corner and just take any action. You must be interested in what is happening there. Uh, it takes me back to what uh, Yoruba used to say that look, if your neighbor is eating something bad, hmm. you need to Better you it quickly, quickly. So that it doesn't affect you when you want to have your rest. So it, it's, it's now a world where collaboration is what is going to help everyone. Whether developed, underdeveloped or developing. So we must work together. And in our country, we can see examples of what happened, for example, during COVID. Yeah. How the private sector came forward yeah. Yeah. and supported the public sector. And we were able to beat the, 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 the uh, stories or the expectations that Africa was going to be, or Nigeria was going to, were going to have people dying, dying on the streets. Street. I remember. Because of that collaboration. And we just have to learn those lessons and know that we that those collaborations if it can happen then it can happen again, again. and it can help to move this economy forward mm. so those are the lessons and i think we've learned those lessons and we are now looking at how to different source engagement those collaborations to continue to help the secured environment is where investment will come to you agree with me mr Limi. investment will never go to any place that is unsafe and security is very paramount for Nigeria. And we see efforts of government and all of that. But you are in the business community. Um, what did you make of the impact of security, insecurity, how it affects investment, and what can we do so that we get the expected investment? I'll give you a story to do. The first time the case of the cheaper girls happened, I was in China. I was in the delegation, the business delegation. We were somewhere in Guangzhou, mm. and we were discussing business with the Chinese can imagine. You can imagine. And then right there in front of us, there was a story about what happened in Nigeria and how so many girls were packed away. That was the end of that story. Mm. That was the end. I'm telling practical you, example. That's just that's just a practical example of what insecurity can do to either foreign direct investment or even local investors. Mm. If you are not sure of life, nothing else can follow. Mm. An insecure environment means I am not secure as a person. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be alive tomorrow. So I do I project. I do I plan. If I am planning to bring in investors to bring their money into my system and my system is not secured enough to guarantee that there's not going to be a, a breakdown of, of, um, of uh, violence in my nation, nobody will come. So it is critical. And those, unfortunately, are things that are beyond the public privacy. Yes, yes. So, but with this issue of collaboration now, the mm, private sector again. can also contribute to its own quota and say, look, government, this is what... And when government is also taking those actions, they also have to now work with the private sector and say, okay, this is what we are doing. What can you do? How can you help? Because now... It is not just about the society, it's also about business. And when business doesn't come, and employment does not come, inflation gets higher, and so many other things that will make the, com the, gov organizer, the country ungovernable. So at the end of the day, it, it, security for me is a critical 
a critical thing we have to tackle if we want to move forward, especially with our economy. We must tackle the issue of insecurity. We cannot continue to be liberal and unsecured nation and expect anything to change. So I, I think talking about it here at the at the economic summit is critical. And thank God that we have it, uh, a, a, a lot of both for private and public sector entities who are here who will be discussing this. I have been in three sessions today, and those sessions wow. were quite revealing, quite eye opening. Because sometimes, I don't know, maybe government needs to also improve its, its communication and dissemination and everything. Some of the things that were discussed at those sessions needs to be held behind public in public sphere, yeah. so that people will know and understand what government is doing mm. beyond the tale of woes. Mm. Let us also look at the good tales mm. and the good things that are happening and the plans that are in the office. Mm. This uh, summit has given us that opportunity. But beyond that, we need to also tell the stories to the millions of Nigerians who aren't here. It's been 30 years. This has been on for 30 years. Yes. Uh, and not a joke. I'm now thinking of uh, communiques, suggestions after these events, um, how, how, how will you assess government's assistance, let's say, implementing some of these recommendations? I said the likes of Tai Wei didn't hear, we know what they are doing, recommendations and all, but how, how would you assess the impact? Let me say this, I, I think the, the pattern of organization has helped the economy so much. I have seen a lot of reforms in the last 25 years or thereabout. I've seen a lot of reforms in the Nigerian economy where the seed for those who were sown during the economic summit, various sessions of the economic summit. For me, that is a good thing to say. I think the economic summit is immensely to the development of the Nigerian economy. It, it creates an opportunity for uh, mind rubbing between the pub public and the private sector. And to me, for me, it has worked. It has worked. Yes, we are not where we want to be. Uh, somebody told me, I think about it two days ago, it's a talk shop. I said, yes, let us continue to talk. Imagine what will happen if we weren't talking. Yeah. Let us continue to talk. Let us continue to bring these things to fore. Let us continue to have those little achievements. At the end of the day, those little achievements will come together to form the big things. Let's not stop talking. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the summit has contributed immensely. Uh, I want to salute the courage of those that started it and their vision and how that vision is helping the country at the moment. So let's talk about directors now. Okay. Which you are the DJ of the Chattered Institute of Directors in Nigeria. Yes. We see a lot, particularly about corporate governance. Yes. And we are talking business here. We yes. know that we need corporate governance for everyone to. So how are you faring and looking at the economy how are directors faring? What's your advice to them now for sustainability and taking advantage of corporate governance? Yeah, thank you. Um, one thing that is clear is that it is easier for an organization that embraces good corporate governance to survive hard times than for organizations that are not taking good corporate governance. So that is the first lesson. That is the first message we put across. Continue to put in place good governance structure. Let your board operate the, the, the best in terms of standards and when the, 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 the environment is tough, you find out that what keeps you going is that transparency, that quality that you have put in the management of your organization. That's what keeps you going. So we don't stop preaching the impact of good corporate governance in the sustainability of organizations. You, you cannot survive anywhere. If you are surviving without good governance, it is only a matter of time. It is only a matter of time. We have some organizations that remember that phrase, too big to fail, but eventually fail because of bad corporate governance. So what we continue to preach, one, corporate governance is not a sprint, it's a marathon, and it continues to evolve. And as it evolves, new method, new ways start coming in. And that is why the Institute, as part of our own role, we continue to do um, uh, uh, advocacy. advocacy, we continue to do capacity development, we continue to bring to fore and, ad and bring to fore new development for our members and even for directors at large. And I think we are playing that role very well. Uh, I believe we, we also, of course, we can do more 
and we'll continue to do more. But the institute is doing its best. We'll take a break, a commercial break, and we'll come back and wrap up this conversation. I'll still have the CEO here for us to wrap up the segment of the program. Back to Lagos. UBA is one bank uniting Africa and connecting Africa to the world and the world to Africa. When you invest in UBA, you're not only investing in one geography, you're investing in 24 geographies. So your Naira is investing in Kenya, it's investing in the US, it's investing in the UK, it's investing in Ghana. 33% of our CEOs in the 20 African countries are women. UBA's diversified business in itself is significant value. Tout ça pour dire que nous sommes une banque qui est innovante, qui regarde et observe tous les besoins des différents dans les pays où nous sommes. I opened my very first bank account 33 years ago with UBA. Your belief in UBA motivates us to excel and deliver long-term value for everyone involved. So thank you to all these critical stakeholders. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TV's News, we have big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live at the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. I'm Miriam Lunge, I'm a passionate environment advocate and a published author. I am the founder of Celebration, a businesswoman and a fashion icon. I am a well coach and a real estate developer. I am Amako Arakui. I'm a corporate commercial lawyer and an entrepreneur. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. I still have Mr. Dele Alini, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Chartered Institute of Directors Nigeria, live with me here from Abuja, Transcorp Hilton, where the NESG 30 is ongoing. So thank you again for, for your time. You're welcome to this. So moving forward, we've seen challenges as a country, not just Nigeria, considering the reforms that we are, we are, we are undergoing at the moment. Looking forward, what's your outlook for the entire economy if things are done properly? Thank you very much. Uh, this morning at a session that I attended, uh, there was a survey, a survey report given by McKenzie. And they said 75% of the organizations that were surveyed said they are happy with the reforms. And they identified two major reforms the removal of all subsidy and the foreign exchange. Foreign exchange. Those are two reforms that are impacting our economy. But the, the, the business community sees it as a wonderful reform. That's the first thing. The second is that 75% of them also said they would wait, they would stay in the country. They will not go anywhere. That tells me a story, a story that we are doing the right thing. The question is, are we, did we do it the right way? Mm. The, question, the second question is, how else would we have done it? Mm. So for me, I, I think those reforms were okay. Those reforms are good. Those reforms were necessary. What we need to now continue to do is to ensure that we continue to to scan the environment and engage with the private sector to know the pain points and bring in solutions. Listen and bring in solutions. I know so much is happening, so much reform is happening in the tax area and everything, and I pray that that constitution, especially with the billions at the National Assembly now, but I think there is a concerted effort to improve the business environment. Yes, sure. It is doing well, it could be better, that, that focus 
it's important for Nigeria. And I'm happy that we are focusing on that area and we are doing much to, to improve the environment, continue to improve the environment. Mm. So it, it looks like it will be bright at the end of the day. That's what they said. That's what I think. That's, I'm a very optimistic Nigerian. I look at Nigeria as going the right way. We will arrive there. But of course, we must take care of the portals on the way. Yeah. I must thank you so much for your time. Let me get a handshake. Thank you so much, Mr. Dele Alimi is the Chief Executive Officer of the Chartered Institute of Directors in Nigeria. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have some live pictures again for you while we are getting our second guest and the conversation continues on Business Nigeria. Live from NESG 30 at Transcopio 10 in Abuja. Stay with us. All right, you've just been listening to our business editor, of course, get interviews, particularly exclusive interviews from some of the world shakers, that's global leaders and business leaders in uh, talking about um, economic challenges and how collaborative action and also competitiveness can, of course, bring some solutions to some of the pressing issues in the world of business. But just before we get back to Abuja, to some of the conversations at the Nigerian Economic Summit in Abuja. Let's take some stories, uh, particularly give you something about the global market where Asian stocks swung between gain and loss today as investors struggled to reach a consensus view on China's broad economic stimulus promises made over the weekend, which were light on specifics. Well, the Hang Seng Index last traded 0.41% lower, while the CSI 300 Blue Chip Index rose 1.52 percent. The Shanghai Composite Index gained 1.66 percent and the Hang Seng Mainland Properties Index advanced 1.37 percent while the CSI 300 Real Estate Index jumped to 4.1 percent. Well, the mixed picture left M MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan up a marginal 0.12% with trading in Asia thinned given a holiday in Japan. And U.S. stock futures similarly edged lower with S&P 500 futures losing 0.06%, while Nasdaq futures fell 0.18%. Euro stocks 50 and FTSE futures eased 0.06% and 0.13% respectively. Well, let's bring a story now where rice smugglers are facing major setbacks following the successful seizure of thousands of bags of foreign parboiled rice along Nigeria border with Republic of Benin. Well, operatives from the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service transported 3,235 bags of seized rice loaded onto more than 10 trucks and other vehicles to the command headquarters in Lagos Wells. A senior business correspondent, if Naya Easy, has a story. Thousands of bags of smuggled foreign parboiled rice, each weighing 50 kilograms, were moved from Abel Kucha to the Customs Federal Operations Unit, Zone A in Lagos. The monumental seizure represents a significant blow to smugglers. Controller Kola Oladeji who led the operation, detailed how officers successfully intercepted the rice from various creeks and border areas. It's based on credible intelligence we got that some people are moving, that the, 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 they were trying to move thousands of bags of rice into the country, smuggling. So based on that credible intelligence provided by a source, I called my aides and we strategized and I personally led the team. As you can see the quantum of these uh, seizures, they are from various entry points from Republic of Benin into the country. He emphasized that customs officers remain vigilant to counter smuggling activities, especially as the holiday season approaches. He wants smugglers to abandon their illegal practices or face continued losses. We decided to commence an operation we call Swift Sting. That's the code name. 
And that's what we have started with this. We are not relying on our efforts. We are going to see more by God's grace. The point is, they just have to stop. If they don't stop, we will not stop too until you know, we bring them, their, bring them down on their knees. Comptroller Olajeji confirmed that no lives were lost during the operation. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Well, let's take you back to the Federal Capital Territory where business editor Tolof Ogunjobi is standing by with another amazing guest to talk about the challenges in the business sector. Well, thank you so much What's again, that? Sarah. Thanks so much uh, for holding forth. Well, I now have my other guest, yes, Mr. Ade Adefeko. Yes, he is the Director of Corporate and Regulatory Affairs at Orleans Agri. He's joining us live at NES 30. Thank you so much. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, and I think it's good to start with the theme again, because before we go, I know you play actively in the agricultural space. Uh, we are going to go there, but let's start with this theme, Collaborative Action for Growth, Competitiveness and Stability. A lot of words here, and they all mean so, so very well. So how does this come to you at this time? Well, it's, it's a very strong, it's a very strong uh, theme for this year. And it's a theme that speaks to collaboration. It's, it's a theme that speaks to competitiveness. Mm. And it's a theme that speaks to us working together, public-private sector partnership. And of course, you know, we're speaking, we're celebrating 30 years of NE, yes. NESG. And uh, if you recall, the founding fathers, the, the Kremers of this world, uh, the late Ernest Shonekon, Dato Sulaiman, who can go on and on who said to themselves, you know what, we need to influence policy. And it's, before then, don't forget that this was birthed during the military era. We now transitioned into democracy and we've been evolving over time. And uh, so far, so good. We're not there yet, but to a large extent, we will get there, or we're trying to get there. Inclusive development yes. uh, is something that many talk about, but look at the challenges we face as a country and as a globe. How do you see, see all of that affecting this inclusive development that we expect to achieve? Well, you know that inclusivity is in different facets. Inclusivi inclusivity gender, yeah. inclusivity, inclusivity generationally, and inclusivity across sectors and across the divide. Talking about the legislature, the executive, the judiciary, and the subnationals. Don't forget that NESG, NESG has policy commissions, okay, structured around thematic groups that speak to different sectors and facets. And I think that's a very, very important one. So people usually only talk about the summit, which is yearly, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind, you know, all year round. Impact. What about impact? I think impact to a large extent, we must speak to the fact that Impact can be measured. What doesn't get measured doesn't get done. But NSU over the over the decade, over decades, has been able to impact. For particularly, look at the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, for example. Yes. At the end, yes, NSG started it in wow. the Midwest, and they came up with the the, the, the entire draft policy. You know, for mm. it to be adopted. That's on the one hand. The corporate, uh, corporate and allied matters uh, act. act, they did it as well. So those things, are, you know, mm. those things are just a few of the things they've done over the years, over the decades. Because this is three decades. It's not mean things. It's not. So, and you know, the conversations will continue. And like I said, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. And again, you are talking about the field this year. We're talking about competitive. You can really be competitive when you have work on competitive advantages. Mm. We have competitive advantage in many areas, which we must bring to bear. And we must speak to collaboration on a very constant basis. We must be strategic, we must be capable of competition. Research shows that agricultural sector, manufacturing, these are the sectors that can create the needed jobs. But there are challenges at the moment. Have you been able to cope for a while? How has it been? Has it been? I didn't think this question was going to come. I'm sure you, you promised it to yourself. You know, if you are speaking to issues, you must speak, you must speak to food security. Yes. Food security is an integral part of national security. Yes, it is. It's a nexus. Of course. There's a, there's a, there's a, a kind of a fusion. A hungry man. And, uh, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, 
the way things, I mean, I've always often spoken to the fact that prior to now, we had an availability problem and an affordability problem. Okay. Food, not readily available. Where it is available, it's not affordable. Food inflation is at an all-time high. Yes, But, you know, for me, I think we need to be more deliberate in our actions. We need to be stop being altruistic for the more long term. I mean, I, I, I'm old enough to speak to development plans. I'm old enough to speak to the, re, the respective agricultural uh, revolutions we've come through. Operation Feed the Nation, Green, green Revolution, uh, Agricultural Change Agenda. And we can go on and on. Now we're talking about, to a large extent, hope renewed. So, and we're believing that hope will be realized. Mm. And so far, we are moving, but we are moving very, uh, very arithmetically, hmm. rather than move, moving geometrically. We can do better, and what in the ways in which we can do better. You know, I'm often one of those who believe that let's not talk about the challenges. Let's talk about the solutions. The solutions is that we need to be a bit more deliberate. We need to plan better, and we need to involve the organized private sector. We need to have these conversations on. Very on a recurring basis, and for me and for us, we have no reason not being food secure. With 220 million people, we have no reason not being food secure. We're the largest producer of yam in the world, or the largest producer of cassava in the world, the largest producer of uh, of cocoyam in the world. We just staples we're not doing better, but we can do better. But we need to make sure that we're cohesive in our policies, and our policies must be private sector led. What the government must do is just to enable policy. Hmm. Part of the discussions here, we touch on security and we know what security has to do with agriculture. So it's going to be a two-in-one question. What is your reaction? What would you advise to government with regards to security? And have we started to value to our produce? Because many will say, let's just get something to eat. But are we also adding value? Cocoa goes and we get chocolate back. All of these examples go on and on. No, no, no. I think I think we need to be very careful when we, the way we uh, we speak to this conversation. Okay. You cannot be everything to everybody. Mm. If you want to be a cocoa producer or processor, be a cocoa be a cocoa processor. Send the processed cocoa to X or Y. Who in turn makes chocolates, which is mm. a different different okay. thing entirely. Okay. If you don't want to make chocolate, you can't be compelled to make chocolate. It's a part of the value chain. It's a value chain. Yes, yeah, it's, you value for chain. it's important to look at the value chain. But make sure in that value chain, you are getting value and getting return and foreign exchange. Nigeria, prior to now, used to be number one in cocoa. Well, probably now we're in a distant fourth. Okay? We can do better. Cashew, sesame, and the likes. But to be fair, the likes of Ulam Agri, which you know, yeah. have been around for close to 35 years and have been adding value to most of these products and exporting and generating revenue. But you need more Olam agrees across the country. You are speaking about security. Security, to be fair, has improved under well, this administration. I'm not saying we're there yet, yes. but I think we are tackling it in a very systematic and systemic way. Hmm. And we just need to give it more time. But my problem is that if you go to the hinterland, the produce is there, but you know what? The problem is storage and preservation, post-harvest losses. Hmm. Those are the critical issues that we face. And how do we address that, private sector? Private it's private capital sector. intensive. It's capital intensive, and government has no business in business. In business. And government has no business in agriculture, apart from providing enabling environment and legislation that will spur private sector drivers to move. And there must be predictability of policies. No policy flip flops. Mm -hmm. And government must understand that any policy you come with must be properly sequenced. So what we have right now, we have a problem of sequencing, and we need to sequence properly. The role of technology, as I almost let you go, I will prepare for the vice president's arrival. The role of technology in agriculture is also key. And one of the uh, themes here, some themes, is um, in igniting innovation and digital uh, revolution, I think. So how do you see that also affecting the agricultural sector? Technology and agri, many are talking about... understand that 30 years ago, and now, the world has moved in leaps and bounds. Digital inclusion, technology has come to explain. You're talking about 
Thank Smart you very much. Smart climate and culture. Oh. Okay, there's lots of technology being deployed, drones here and there. So, people are not talking about the, the land you have, we are talking about how you're using technology to improve yields on the one hand, to improve precision agriculture. And I think to a large extent, AI, you know, we can go on and on. Technology is playing a pivotal role and will play a pivotal role for a very long time to come. And I think we are adopting that as well. Innovate or die. And I think we are innovating, particularly the young ones are coming up with technologies that are smart and that we can adapt to improve yields and to improve our entire agricultural value chain and the entire ecosystem. Mm. Mm. Very, very, very interesting way uh, to, to, to wrap up this conversation. I, I'm just looking forward at all what happens, growth around the agricultural space, manufacturing space, so that we can create this uh, needed uh, jobs. Uh, well, I, I must thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Ade Adefeko, Director, Corporate and Regional Affairs. Regulatory Affairs. Uh, regulatory Affairs. Oh, Director, Corporate and Regulatory Affairs. Thank you so much. Apologies for that. I'm sorry, I've been speaking around agriculture. Uh, and, and I'm looking at Nigeria playing very, very well high in that, in that sector. South Africa and some other countries are doing pretty better than we are doing. We pray that we get to that. But I must thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, then. thank you so much there. Uh, well, yeah, uh, Sarah, you, you've heard it live from uh, Mr. Adi Adifeko, who's the director of corporate and regulatory affairs. I got it right this time. Olam Agri, uh, saying a lot about Nigeria's economy, agriculture, what we need to do. And you saw my first conversation too, all around the theme. That's what we've been focusing on, which is collaborative action for growth sustainability um competitiveness and sustainability you you also remember i would i would have asked that for mr Adifeko before i let him go around the afcfta if you would remember that is also an agreement that everyone expects that would strengthen trade around the african continent but how well nigeria is playing around that space we, we are yet to know but i know that countries are taking advantage of that so that will be it uh, for today yes you. yes i can hear you Hello, Sarah. Business editor, Hello, Sarah, of, you of course, we'll get more updates. We'll get more updates from you, of course, tomorrow, uh, later on, about um, the 30th yes. of Nigerian yes. Economic Summit in Abuja. Well, hopefully, we'll get to get back to you and confirm you, if, uh, as at the time, the vice president will get that. We understand it will be there pretty soon. Uh, hopefully, he gets to bring up some uh, policies that can change uh, the business landscape in Nigeria and in some other uh, economies around Africa. I'm a business editor there with some involved. exclusives with some business involved. leaders Not at the Nigerian Economic involved. Summit in Abuja. This is the 30th edition of that summit. Well, let's go to some other stories now in the world of business. And uh, I understand that. Let's go to the stock market and uh, let's bring in Mukhtar Mohammed. He will be talking to us about the gains we've seen on the market today. Thank you so much for joining us. After we've seen the figures, some of the figures come out on the market uh, today, uh, the gainers and the losses, really, what are the factors responsible for this gain? The same factors, uh, market uh, sentiment, market perception, you can't um, separate the market from the economy. So definitely, the market is, uh, is, 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 a, is a barometer to measure the economy. Now the economy is struggling, and so the, the only highlight of the, of the economy, you might just say, is the market, but there's a point in time that the market has to take the life of the economy. So as a stand, investors are looking at um, perception or where to go in, especially for stocks that will be paying um, dividends. That's where investors are looking at, of course, during a down economy, or during times of um, hardship in an economy like what we're experiencing now, um, cash become kings and liquidity is king. Well, let's take a look at really, we've seen the first trading of the market today and we're seeing some gains. What is your outlook for the week? Well, I think the one positive thing happening in the market today is the listing of Aradat, um, a petroleum company or oil and gas company, one of the leading players in the oil and gas sector, has finally been listed in the market. 
Uh, we saw that we have done about 15 minutes before the close of market today. I think that seems to be the only news that is exciting the market. Uh, it closed on free bid today, so hopefully that is what every um, uh, um, um, analyst, investor, player, trader will be looking at during the week to see how far it will go and how well it will be available for, for maybe retail investors and institutional investors to begin to take position. I think for now that is um, one area the market is taking. That's what everybody is looking at. Also, you also have to know that today is the last closing uh, day for for those for people to qualify for the payment of dividend of UBA. A lot of volume um, traded on that on, on that form because of um, investors also are looking at them. Um, that like I said, cash is king. They are looking at taking position in getting those dividend payout. Um, towards the end of the week, we will also see that for Fidelity Bank. And then hopefully before the week, the third quarter result, the travel, the financial institution will begin to roll in. Those could be things that could um, determine the direction of the market. But for now, like I said, the oil and gas sector are that is what every investor is talking about. Every investor is looking at and every investor is um, an analyst a market player are uh, keeping their eyes on that stock. Hopefully this week turns all green. We're hoping that um, some of the sectors will wake up to, and we're hoping to see more gains in most of these sectors. Thank you so much, Tar Mohammed, investment banker. Thank you so much for talking to us and helping us understand what is really shaping the market for this week. Thank you for having me. Well, China's consumer inflation unexpectedly eased in September, while producer price deflation deepened, heightening pressure on Beijing to roll out more stimulus measures and shaky economic activity. Well, data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that the consumer price index rose 0.4% year-on-year, the slowest in three months, against a 0.6% rise in August. The producer price index fell at the fastest pace in six months, down 2.8% year-on-year in September compared to 1.8% decline the previous month and below an expected 2.5% decline. Meanwhile, Goldman Sachs has raised the country's gross domestic product forecast to 4.9%. That's from 4.7% for the year 2024, citing the government's latest round of stimulus measures. Well, Singapore's central bank left its interest rate unchanged as expected as data showed the economy brightened up in the third quarter. The Monetary Authority of Singapore said it will maintain the prevailing rate of appreciation of its exchange rate-based policy brand known as the nominal effective exchange rate. But also advanced trade ministry data earlier showed gross domestic product grew 4.1% year-on-year in the third quarter on the pine. Uh, by a boost in manufacturing, accelerating from 2.9% in the second quarter, while policy makers expressed optimism about the 2025 outlook. Capital economics markets, economists, uh, warned against the risk of keeping monetary policy too tight for too long, and he said it will prompt a central bank to pivot. Well, let's bring it back home where the Lagos State government has inducted over 700 pupils from both primary and secondary schools across the state into the Young Farmers Club. Pretty interesting. The Young Farmers Club is an initiative of the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tinumbu, and it is aimed at encouraging students to adopt modern farming techniques and contribute to Nigeria's food security. Well, speaking during the Lagos Agricultural Scholars Quiz Competition and Young Farmers Club induction, Kofi Babajide Sonwolu emphasized the critical role agriculture plays in Nigeria's economy, describing it as the backbone of sustenance. Around this is to get our young children um, interested in agriculture and food systems and to showcase the many ways and means by which they can get into it. As the state government, under the leadership of Mr. Babajide Olushala Sowolu, we are building smart systems, smart farms in certain schools 
across the state. We do it annually and we have the students also come here to showcase some knowledge that they have amassed in the last one year since the smart farms have been built in their schools. So it is an all-encompassing activity for us, for us to encourage our young ones, get them farms within their schools, they learn and then we get here you know, as part of our World Food Day activities and they showcase the knowledge that they have gathered over the years. Well, crude oil prices today wiped out nearly all gains made last week after data showed China's inflation rates declined and a lack of clarity on the country's economic stimulus plan stoked fears about fuel demand in the world's biggest crude importer, where U.S. West Texas Intermediate fell to sell at $74.55 per barrel. With a price decline of 1.34%, Brent crude futures also experienced a downward price review of one3 33% to sell at $77.99 per barrel. Obona Light sold at $78.62 per barrel with a downward price margin of 2.84%. And for the open basket, crude oil dealers offer $77.23 per barrel with an uptick of 0.25%. Well, I understand we have to go back to the Federal Capital Territory, and that's at the Nigerian Economic Summit. That's the 30th edition, and our business editor is standing by, of course, maybe to tell us that the Vice President is around. All right, there. Um, if you can hear me, Sarah, the Vice President is the Vice President around, around already. He's not in the hall at the moment. Yes, he's arrived, but he's not the hall where he is yet to walk into the hall uh, yes everyone is expecting him here so there's a session going on uh, just to discuss about years of NESG what has happened over the years policies they've suggested to governments how many have been implemented or how many have been you know deliberate deliberations that have gone on in this hall for years they're talking that's what you're doing. It's like an overview. But like I was saying earlier, the trust of this is to address economic issues. And you know what we face as a country. The country that our country is over. Uh, going reforms we have the subsidy removal and also the liberalization of the foreign exchange market all of this has caused some shocks and we all know what is happening now people complain about inflation and of course growth rates so all of these issues here will be discussed one after the other monetary policy and fiscal issues were also addressed in one hall today and you know Taiwo Idele who chairs the presidential committee on tax and um, um, fiscal reforms he was there to make the position known that there must be a high handshake between the monetary side and the fiscal side it can be done alone the central bank cannot just institute policies on their own they have to there must be a handshake with the fiscal side so that it could implement uh, um, the the implementation will be seamless and the impact would be felt inclusively also something that would uh, uh, that would at this gathering is the issue of technology and innovation. You know that that is the way to go, financial technology. You know, many people don't even go to the banks anymore. So issues around fintech and what's been happening with blockchains, AI, how they disrupt and, of course, um, affect growth, uh, militate. And, of course, they have positives and negatives. All of this will be identified uh, at this gathering. Sir, I must tell you, it is all, all, almost all issues will be raised. Also, growth, uh, geographic, as even outside Nigeria, sub Saharan Africa, we see that IMF has revised growth in some cases, looking at the issues that are on ground, global issues, Israel, a mass war, we know Russia and Ukraine crisis. All of these have impact on commodity prices, fuel prices, and of course, energy uh, resources. All of this, we, be, we, we have international representatives here that would also bear the minds of their own countries and what they want to do with Nigeria and what they think is the best for us to be able to get along uh, with all of these policy issues. Policy consistency is something that many have talked about. Our government is a continuum. So whatever policy is instituted by government, it should be followed to the latter. Not today this happens and tomorrow another thing happens. Investors will stay away. Money will only come to a place where it is relaxed and had, where there's confidence and where it's where we have security. So all of that will be discussed here with various sessions going on. We also have the one for youth, inclusiveness in governance. You know that youth have a role to play in governance. This time around, they want to take 
their position so there are discussions also around what roles will youth play in economic development government is giving them that opportunity don't forget president balatinumbu also talked about a youth confab that will be coming on very soon so immediately the vice president gets in he would declare the event officially opened yes sessions have been going on but it's not yet to be officially declared open and once it's declared open other sessions will continue We'll be here Tuesday, we'll be here Wednesday, bringing you up to speed with all the activities that will be going on here. And I would remind you again that the right persons will be speaking on the issues, not our representatives and all of that. We have most of the top government officials here in person. I can confirm that to you, Sarah. Thank you so much for being there for us. A pretty landmark event, very iconic, particularly if you look at the history of um, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group and why they decided to come up with this economic summit far back in 1993. A very interesting uh, points and conversations holding there for four days. So we're expecting that um, policies will be made at this economic summit hopefully it yes. will uh, translate yes. into something interesting and uh, for the economy uh, in uh, the year thank you so much to Lopo Gujarat B we will get back to you tomorrow stay safe and get all of the uh, big names for us tomorrow so that the conversations will be more robust and interesting well, from all of us here on Business Nigeria team, we want to say thank you so much for staying through with us and for enjoying our uh, talks about the market and, of course, uh, conversations from the Nigerian Economic Summit in the Federal Capital Territory. We'll bring you more stories from that event. It's a four-day event, and it promises to be interesting, uh, talking about the conversations that will affect the economy in the, this year. That's uh, as we wrap up this year. Thank you so much for watching. I am Sarah Ayeku. World Now is up next. Stay with us.